All right, so uh, a different integrator that we had an opportunity to work with wanted to try something a little different. They'd been to uh, Europe and were inspired by some of the wet scrubbing systems that they had seen there and thought maybe they could do something on the relatively uh, cheap side and be a little bit more cost effective on some of the barns that they were building in Iowa. So the facility that they are building, basically they aren't a tunnel barn, but they have designed it, developed it to be able to bank all their fans on one location here on the lean-to on the side of the barn. So that lean-to is located in the middle of the barn. Uh, to do this, they do uh, spray foam in their buildings as they think it helps them get a little better air distribution throughout the barn. Uh, but the important part for us in using this uh, trickling scrubber system is that they had all the fans at one point uh, including their pit fans. So all that ventilation air from the barn was always running through here and that allowed them to run all this air through a trickling scrubber basically. To give you sort of an idea of what's happening, uh, what they did is in their barn design, they built an isolated pit below that lean-to uh, where they had a freshwater reservoir. So they had a level uh, system float system in there to always try and maintain some a certain amount of water in that reservoir. Uh, they did have some evaporation as they ran it the air through there. So there was some makeup water added relatively continuously. Uh, but all that barn air ran through the sidewall uh, through a damper system. A little bit of it was pulled from directly underneath the pit. So they were trying to control sort of what was barn ventilation, what was pit ventilation. It flowed through our lean-to here and through this trickling cool cell, right? And that cool cell had water from this fresh water reservoir continuously uh, trickling across it. So just like you might see a cool cell on the inlet of a barn, here they were using it to treat some of that exhaust air. My picture here, uh, certainly that lean-to is a little cramped. It's a little hard to get good pictures, uh, but it was basically a cool cell. Uh, they had uh, two systems. One, we started out just trickling water uh, down that cool cell. Eventually they did modify the system so that we had some sprinklers shooting water on the inlet side of that cool cell, uh, but there was always a pretty consistent water film across it and we were always trickling that water. We did have some discussions about potentially acidifying. In our field trials, we never did any actual acidification. Uh, they wanted to try and do it relatively cost effectively. Uh, water, makeup water was pretty easy to do that. And we did have to change out our water two or three times a year. Uh, their wastewater, they added to their manure storage pit, right? And it got land applied when we uh, did a land application event for manure. At uh, this site, uh, our inlet samples were actually obtained from in the barn. So while it might have been ideal to try and take them on the inlet side of that uh, trickling filter system, uh, it was pretty wet in there, pretty humid, and there was a lot of splash water. And that was uh, a little hard on some of our uh, air sampling equipment, especially some of the electronics in it. Uh, uh, we did take a few samples from in there and had some reasonable results, but it was hard to hold up uh, just making them work week in, week out doing that. So we did have to move the inlet side uh, into the barn. So our upstream samples are, are basically barn air quality. Uh, the downwind side, we took on that leeward side of the trickling filter uh, within the lean-to structure. In this case, we did some sampling again for uh, the three types of particulate matter, PSP, uh, PM10, and PM2.5. Uh, we do have uh, some odor and ammonia samples that I don't have the data processed yet. Uh, odor samples with uh, sorbent tubes, uh, ammonia samples with uh, Leland Legacy and uh, a honeycomb system where it would be a, a wet sample. And then again, some olfactometry to really see the odor levels that were going in and coming out. To supplement this, we did do a little lab scale work uh, because we had some questions about how much impact does uh, acidifying that trickling solution really have and to try and give some guidance on if they wanted to try acidifying what they might be able to do. Uh, so just to show our lab scale system, it was sort of the same idea, right? Uh, we had a manure storage column uh, right here that we blew fresh air through, got some interaction, and then we ran it through, uh, again, a basically a little PVC box here with a piece of cool cell set up into it, a uh, pump system on the bottom. So we were recycling that either water or acid solution through that uh, trickling filter continuously, trying to mimic what they were doing in the barn. Uh, when we did that, all our ammonia samples were taken with dragger meters, and we did do some pH measurements of what our solution was like. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to show is uh, in our lab scale system, uh, as you probably expect, with uh, that ammonia sort of saturating that water, the performance of the system does degrade, and it degraded relatively quickly, right, within about six or seven days. 
our uh, ability to remove more ammonia from that airstream uh, basically went to zero, right? So what was happening is that ammonia level in that water solution would build up to such a point that it just couldn't hold any more at the conditions we were at and all that ammonia would pass through. We did play around with ventilation rates and at lower ventilation rates where we had higher ammonia concentrations coming in, just like you'd expect that trickling filter had a greater percent removal uh, with higher airflow rates and having lower concentrations coming into that system. Uh, we still did see significant reductions, but the reductions weren't as high in level as they were at some of those lower ventilation rates where we just had more gradient. Overall, though, it seemed to remove a relatively consistent amount of the ammonia, right? So the percentage of ammonia that we were removing was somewhere around 18% of the incoming airstream. Uh, we were really interested in how acidifying might help this. Uh, no surprise, right? If you're more acidic, you can do a lot better. Uh, acidifying does add to the cost. It does add to the complexity and potential corro or corrosion concerns. Uh, but overall, if you really wanted to remove ammonia, it does help a lot. Uh, so we have had some discussions with the farm about what a protocol for that might look like, uh, talking about different acid choices, and hopefully we might get some of those changes implemented. Uh, we did play around with olfactometer measurements as well. So there you can see uh, one of my panelists smelling the sample, trying to identify which one has odor. Uh, but what we did see is that uh, actually as we got more acidic in our lab scale systems, we actually had lower odor removal efficiency. So while we did better for ammonia, some of those other odorants, potentially the sulfur compounds, we just didn't do as well on. If we look back at what we saw for the barn uh, sort of scale results, in terms of particulate matter, uh, it did a pretty nice job of removing particulate adder, matter from that air, air stream, right? Uh, with the total suspended particulate, uh, again, a statistically significant reduction, but removing somewhere around 80% of the particulate matter with a little bit lower removal rates for some of those smaller systems, right? 78% and 66% respectively for PM10 and PM2.5, uh, but it worked pretty well. The other thing I should probably mention is we did have two reps of this system. Uh, the barn we were working with was a double wide barn. So they had uh, this system set up on both sides of it. So every time we took a measurement, which was every other week, we got two sampling results, one from each side. And then uh, looking at some of our odor results from the barn, uh, in this case, the odor results, we had quite a few more samples. We were there uh, for 12 months sampling every other month. Um, so quite a few samples to work with. Uh, and we did get a statistically significant odor reduction again. Uh, again, roughly about 30% reduction uh, with both sides of the barn working about equally well. Uh, we did have a few instances where uh, we had some plugging of nozzles and that trickling water system wasn't working. In all those cases, you could tell pretty easily, uh, not only because we were in there and we could check the water flow, but our odor results uh, were almost always negligible difference between those two. Oftentimes with uh, a little bit more odor uh, coming out than in on some of those cases. So overall, both those systems perform relatively well for us. Uh, in terms of that trickling filter, we saw great solids removal and a reasonable odor removal efficiency uh, without having to uh, tinker with it or go to the struggle of, um, with, of uh, acidification. Uh, but it did have some challenges in terms of management and especially of dust plugging up some of those nozzles as we went to uh, a sprinkling system. 